Behold the venom produced by the head of the snake. Gaze upon the fruits of its propagation of the global war machine. Commiserating its empire of destruction and misery as it slithers throughout the globe, bringing megadeth and agony to all. Beware the head of the snake. Stay vigilant, my friends. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for spending your time in the Tiger's Den. We will try not to waste it. This is Angry Tiger, and this is the weekly Tiger and Snake financial wrap-up. It is Friday, February 10th, 2023 AD. Today, ladies and gentlemen, a quick rundown on the global economic shift, and also a rundown on the high, the 500-pound high-wire act called the debt market. We're going to check precious metals, and we're also going to check the rigged dice games of the stock market. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. You have the tiger by the tail. What's going on, everybody? Just uh, want to say hi to everybody, and uh, I'm all dressed up because I'm going to be on the foxhole. So don't expect me to dress like this all the time. But Jason Barker invited me into the trenches, so I wanted to look my best for him, debuting on his show. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to dive right into this because i got to be there in a little while. So we gotta get we gotta get burning on this. I am going to share the screen with you, ladies and gentlemen. This week it's been a little bit of crazy. The debt market's been kind of crazy. Lots of buying and selling going on. Um, a lot of buying here towards the end, making things look a little a little shifty, a little unstable. Which uh, the stock market hasn't caught up to that yet, but they will soon. And we're gonna jump right into this. And this is the what I was talking about the shift. There's an economic shift going on worldwide. I think if you listen to Tony Arterburn or you listen to a lot of other these economic guys, they'll they'll tell you. And you know, one of the big things, the stories that that it should be on Fox News every night, if you ask me, or any other of these giant uh, moron media publications. And that's they're not the mainstream media; they're the moron media. So that's that's where I'm at with them at this point. And just a bunch of puppets for the bankers. Anyways, here we go. China's, you know. She calls for oil trade in Yuan at Gulf Summit in Rida. Probably pronounced that wrong, but that's from Reuters. It's just a headline. I'm just going to buzz through them just kind of to prove my point a little bit. When China and Saudi Arabia meet, nothing matters more than oil. CNN. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, my point is, is that I think that as things get turbulent here at home, I think that the world the economic market and I, i'm pretty sure they knew this was going to happen when we did this thing with russia uh it's going to shift it, it and america is not you know we're we're looking at not being the reserve currency very soon and that will change everybody's life in a dramatic way and you're going to have to you think things are tight now with inflation you're we're talking hyperinflation and the instant weimar republic kind of stuff and it's important that you know about this because it's coming in i believe our lifetime and i believe in a very short time uh, within a decade at the most. Um, and it's something that you got to be aware of and cognitive of because it is going to be a major shift in your lifestyle, way more than you're feeling now. And I think we're going to get a pretty good shift in our lifestyles due to this inflation because the Fed just keeps buying and printing and buying and printing. And then they're not doing anything at all to help inflation, which I keep saying over and over again. And I will keep saying over and over again because the head of the snake, the uh, snake headed, you know, tin bending, dog robbing, you know, uh, bankers there they that's what they do gypsy headed dog robbing gypsy headed i'm so upset the reason i'm upset i'll get to in a minute a little tongue-tied but you guys know what i'm saying we're gonna I'm, we're gonna get it out the snake-headed gypsy tin benders down at the central banks in the federal reserve there we go sorry ladies and gentlemen i'll get to why i was i'm, I'm pretty upset because i was doing prep for this and i ran across this article and it really made i mean Boy, did it steam my tail. It, it really made me angry. Basically, even more than that, there wasn't even a roar for liberty. It was a very, very angry roar. So we're going to move on to CBDC. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say something that um, I got I got here. I was actually, guys, you need to check out Gregory Manor. You know, he, he, he is actually absolutely awesome. And the stuff that he, you know, he comes up with is, uh, it's, it's spot on. I agree with him wholeheartedly uh, on almost everything. And you, you definitely want to check him out. He's on YouTube and I think he's on Twitter now. I think he came back to Twitter, but he is saying, you know, <coughs> yes, alert, alert. Something is happening. Something is coming. 
And what that is, is the Bank of America said that the, uh, where is it at here? Yeah, the Bank of America warned the day of reckoning will come <laughs> for the stock market soon. Because there, and then there was another report the day before yesterday that there was a giant disconnect between the stock market and what's actually happening. Terra firma, which we all know that, you know, the stock market's a big casino lie. And uh, the Fed buys up the debt and, you know, there's a bunch of zombie corporations and all kinds of games are played that that would make your head spin. Um, it's not just a matter of what it used to be. Looking at the time here, we got to keep it moving, ladies and gentlemen. Um, CBDC News, you know I'm on that, head of the snake. Um, not good. Not good at all. Um, basically, what's going on with these guys is uh, this is from the opinion commentary i believe it was from the washington post or the new york times one not the new york times i believe it was the washington post where are we at no wait uh what is that wall street journal not much better but a cbc dollar would empower the fed if not americans really oh that's very nice of you to say that wall street journal i'm surprised that you would even come up with something like that what in the sam hill would make you say that hmm anyways Growing number of Democrat and Republican policymakers are supporting creating a central bank digital currency. Do you hear hear that? Supporting. Okay. So we know where the Congress is at. All right. We know where our lawmakers are on this. Some lawmakers say a CBDC, which is a digital dollar issued by the Fed, could help stave off a debt crisis and preserve the dollar status as the world's current reserve currency. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure turning it digital will that, that it'll immediately everybody will flock to it, right? I think in India, there's there's only like 50,000 people or 50, you know, thousand people out of the millions there using the currency. They don't like it very much. Nobody likes it anywhere around the world when they're doing this. But I'm sure it'll be the reserve currency immediately. Maybe they'll back it by the phantom gold in Fort Knox. Anyway, some some lawmakers say, yeah, it could help stave off the debt crisis. They want to make sure they get paid. We have to get paid. That's that's the whole thing. While everybody else is being turned into serfs, while that while the interest rates go up, the inflation rates go up, the middle class is in hyperdrive to being in locked into a feudal system. That's what's going on right now. That's what the federal banks are going on. And ladies and gentlemen, I am not my chipper self today because I'm reading all of this stuff and it's irritating me. So the tiger's tail is all fluffy and out of shape right now. You know, so I'm sorry about that. But you know, we're you know, I just. I can't, I can't take, I can't take it. Sometimes I get a little, I get a little crazy, a little crazy. So this stuff drives you crazy. So we got early Democrats support Democrats, big party government there, of course. Now this article to get to, to, to their, you know, feather in their cap, whoever wrote this, they, they don't sound like wall street Journal. So am I amazingly? So it does not sound like they're for the CBDC. They sound like they're pretty much against it, but if, so we got Democrats. They like the big government. They're going to love the CBDC. This guy's saying, and then, Republicans proponents of the digital dollar say it would <laughs> I love it. See, at least the Democrats, when they're doing something to you, they stab you right in the eye and they're facing you, right? This is what I'm gonna do, and then they stab you in the eye, right? No, Republicans don't do that. They whisper sweet nothings into your ear and cut your throat from ear to ear. That's what the Republicans do. That's their 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 style of doing things. So, you know, just remember that controlled opposition. So some rep Republicans proponents of the digital dollar say their party's version of CBDC would enhance liberty, but not government control. <laughs> That's rich. That is really, really, really good. That is ridiculous. You know what the CBDC is going to do to everything? It is going to melt everything down and everything, <laughs> everything is going to turn into trackable, traceable things. You are humat at that point. They know everything you do. You're not going to escape the tax, man. There's no way they're going to get every single penny that they get. And people who, who say stuff like that. I pay the fool. That's right. Say it again, Mr. T. I pay the fool. And another thing I'd like to tell them. Get out the jibber jabber. That's right. Because it's nothing but jibber jabber. That's all that is, right? There is jibber jabber. So anyway, he goes on to say, in addition, Congress, which I like this. I mean, I, I'll agree with him here. In addition, Congress has proved itself incapable of auditing the Fed or holding it to account. Unlike the intelligence agencies, the central bank was designed to be accountable. The Fed is a semi-private. Listen, listen to this admission. A semi-private bank supervised by seven governors serving 14 terms. Its budget 
it's a, it isn't appropriated by Congress granting this already unaccountable institution more authority over our money and further empower the Fed's 20,000 plus employees, not the American people. Well, thank you. What's your what's this gentleman's name? Let's we need to give him. Well, it got cut off by the PDF thing. Where is it? Got to be in here. Yeah, it was right here and it got cut off. Well, whoever wrote this article for the let's see here. I think it's Mr. Feelier. That's who did it. So, hey, Mr. Feelier, great job. I love the article. You're spot on about that. And uh, thanks for pointing out that our Congress is all for the CBDC, which I always tell you, it is coming at us like a bullet train, a bullet train of death. And they will hand you the shotgun of debt to blow your head off as they squeeze you with inflation to suck you into their system and create dependency from the middle class, turning them into a total feudal system of serfs and below by the time they are done. And what's going to happen to the poorest of the poor is ungodly speakable. People will die because they won't be able to eat. You know, this stuff isn't a joke. And, you know, and it's, you know, you got these Congress people just want to enrich themselves. That's that they don't give a, they don't care about us at all. Almost cussed. Pretty frustrated. And this is why I am going to show you why I got so frustrated. When I was researching this afternoon, I found this <laughs> editorial out of the Chicago Tribune. They are the royalty of the left. So we must love the Chicago Tribune. And I'm going to give them a gong. They are royalty. We should listen to them. This is what really inflamed me. The Fed is hurting us at the supermarket. But it has no choice. It has no choice. They're not going to hurt you. They're, everything that they do is no big deal. It's all for your help. I'm They're forever blowing, blowing bubbles. bubbles. Can you feel them? Slip up when you touch them. And nothing happens to you. And it's today. And they're blowing the bubbles. Yeah, blowing the bubbles. And when they pop like the debt market, who's out of luck? You're out of luck. You'll be on your knees begging them for some kind of help. And that's what they're counting on. Anyways, back to the meat of the matter. I mean, a little bit, I see, spending time knowing I'm talking to people cheers me up. And I want to, I want to thank everybody that watches and listens and, and cares about this stuff because that cheers me up. And this article, though, did not cheer me up. It was like someone defecated in my cereal. We understand that these rate increases can cause pain for everyday people. Higher interest rates raise the cost of borrowing via credit cards. They know what they're doing. Listen to this. Listen to this jackass. Whoever wrote this. Jackass. That's what he is. And it, with, the, with the headline. With the headline. It's, they have no choice. Don't, don't be mad at the Fed. And then he goes on to further to say how they are hurting us and how they're putting us people into debt. Everyone's going into debt trying to maintain their lifestyle. And at this point, it's not even maintaining their lifestyle. They're just trying to make men's meet, and they're going into debt because of these dog-robbing, snake-headed, gypsy tin benders at the Federal Reserve. There we go. Got the flow going. I'm a human. DYI Media. DIY media and hey this is what you get you're getting the real angry over here so prices are they go on continue to say sorry i get in the weeds a little prices are still going up many everyday goods for many everyday goods and services while gasoline is down at the pump that's going to change and by the way um if you're paying attention to your gas natural gas and your electricity costs they have gone up exponentially across the country in a very short period of time and it's not stopping it just keeps going so anyways, look, yep, just get a load of the prices at the grocery store. Like, this is no big deal. It's okay. You got it. You have to bear it because the Fed and the, and, and the lawmakers are a bunch of jackasses that put you in this situation with their corrupt Luciferian system with fiat money that's nothing but debt. And then they buy more debt to keep the market going so all their friends can have parties there in Wall Street. Food is as basic as it gets. They go on to say how people are cutting their food down to they used to buy one thing now they buy something different more generic they can't afford you know something say you were buying quaker oats now you got to buy great value brand or whatever by the way ladies and gentlemen nothing is financial advice on this i am an auto body mechanic and you should not take financial advice from me <laughs> disclaimer 
consumers have been forced. I like to point out things so you can take care of yourself. That's all I can really do is look at the what's going on, you know, the tea leaves a little bit and just say, hey, check this out, guys. And then you make your own decision. Consumers have been forced to adjust their budgets currently. Some 50% of consumers said they were buying less expensive food, to my point, was what I was just saying. They go on to say, listen to these numbers, but don't blame the Fed and don't don't be mad at them, says the Chicago Tribune jackasses. They're jackass squad that they got over there. You know, they're not even in the peanut gallery. They're in the melon head, cal- the, the soft melon head category gallery. The U.S. Department of Agriculture pegged food inflation at 9.9. It's only 9.9. And we know it's higher. They're saying 9.9. Go to shadow stats. It'll give you the real. I'd say it's around between 12 and probably 13% higher. And I'm, I'm being conservative because I don't like to be bombastic. With uh, food at home prices up 11.4%. Whoa, going to my point a little bit. And food away from the home up 7.7%. For 2023, its analysis are forecasting food inflation at 7.1% higher. Now, remember, that's 7.1% higher than it was when it was at 11.4%. So, okay? This, they, they, don't under, they don't tell you how this is compounding. This is compounding. Then the current 6.5 overall inflation rate for the consumer price index as, as, as of December. And it's not compounding in the way where it's adding to it. That it's compounding in a way where it's not 7.7% plus 11.4%. You could probably you could probably take that 7 it's some that 7.1 number that say they say it's going to go higher and probably take that down to about 5.1 and then add it to that and you'll get at 15% and that's you know that's kind of where shadow stats and I, I kind of am at at this point. So that's that. Real quick, bond market unstable. How do I know that? I don't have to do a bunch of research. I go over the MMRI. I showed you guys, these are our claws. These are our teeth. These are our warning signs. Bang, there it is, the MMRI. Check it out. It's at 241. Once it gets at 250, we're in the danger zone. So the market is unstable because the bond market and the Dixie are, are all over the place. But they're buying more debt. As this goes up, the more debt they buy, okay? The market doesn't like that. When, that, when it gets to a, a critical point, the market's going to be totally freak out because the bond market's going to bust when the 10-year yield shoots to a point where you know when this thing hits this and around here hold on to your hats and, and, and keep a close eye on the stock market which is where we're going today right now so we got what do we have s p nothing major 0.2 points up 0.25 percent up nasdaq down 76.5 basis points that's down 0.62%. No big deal. Dow Jones finished pretty strong, 169. They're at 33,000. Everybody's still kind of in the happy kind of clear area. Volatility index dropped down to 20.53. We watch these things. Keep our eyeballs on these things. But it's all rigged. Zombie corporations buying stuff up. The Fed is buying assets left and right and not selling any. They got the bonds that they're buying everywhere. They're jacking the 10-year yield up. They're jacking it down. Price of the dollars flying everywhere. Big tech. Eh, not so good, but they haven't been really too hot lately anyways. You got gold and silver. Silver went down, went down again, made some gains at the end of the market. But overall, we're down. We're down to 21. It was at 23. It's it's going down again. If you can buy silver, do it. Get a hold of Wise Wolf. Get a hold of Tony Arbor. Uh Gold went up a little bit, but hovering in that $1,800 range. Oil, 79, 74. It went up a little bit. Not a big deal. You know, I mess around a little bit. I don't have, I don't play the stock market. I got a couple of gold mine, and this is not financial advice. Some gold mining companies and some silver mining companies I invest in. A couple of pharmaceutical companies, but I don't have big money. I mean, I'm less than a couple hundred dollars in investments. Believe me, maybe, maybe I'll get lucky, but I doubt it. And then, you know, well, Bitcoin. Bitcoin went up. Bitcoin went down. Bitcoin's at around twenty-one right now. Crypto. If you can afford to buy some cheaper cryptos or even get a piece of Bitcoin. I always like to hold it because you don't know what's going to happen when all this stuff collapses. There might be a time where a window, right, where your cryptocurrency is worth whatever you can, trade it in, get some dollars for it before it busts, you know, when it gets high, like I should have when it was high, and then buy some gold and silver, uh, hard commodities, you know, hard commodities, hard commodities, hard commodities. That's what I always say. And there is your view on the market, ladies and gentlemen. I got a couple minutes and I got to be on JB's show. So I got to get wrapping this up. With that being said, yeah, that's everything. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, sorry I was in such a crummy mood earlier. And I do not have a funny for you, but I will I will do this for you. When I did see that uh 
that article from the Chicago Tribune, man, that really, really just just urinated in my Cheerios. It, it really made me extremely upset. Where is this guy at? It and it really made me mad. And I didn't really, <laughs> I wasn't prepared to read that and and then do this show. And it made my head. <laughs> So that's how I was about 20 minutes ago. Ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, prepare financially. Hard commodities, gold, silver, not financial advice, but that's what I would do. If I were to buy gold and silver, where would I go? I would go to davidknight.gold. I would click on the little icon that he has over here, and then that would take me to the wisest of the wolves, right to his den. He comes out. He's a nice wolf. He's not going to eat you. He's going to offer you silver at a great price. He's going to offer it to you in a buying group where you could set it and forget it, monthly package, all the way from $50 all the way up to 1000 You got 125 250 500 Definitely want to check out the guys at Wise Wolf, Gold and Silver. I am Angry Tiger. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Rumble. You can find me on Odyssey sometimes. <laughs> as soon as I get Odyssey down, it will be great. <clears throat> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. We're waiting to hear back from Odyssey. And uh, you can find me on Twitter, but most of the time you can find me on Nights of the Storm all the time at 10 a.m., on saturday's eastern time and you want to check it out um jason barker's there we have a lot of good guests a lot of good guests from the chat surprise guests all the time so it's a lot of fun we have a good time you can also join me on the tiger's den every wednesday eight to nine ladies and gentlemen like i always say time is your most valuable commodity try not to waste it spend it doing something you love with someone you love improving yourself or preferably all three Ladies and gentlemen, until we meet again, and have a great weekend. Your time is your most valuable commodity. Cherish it and use it wisely. Until we meet again.